I'm Justine Troy, co-founder of 42 Below, consulting with Akoya and author of the book Every Bastard Says No. So what's it like being involved in another IPO? Well, the second IPO, it's funny because um, most people assume that life is, is a lot easier once you've had a, a significant business success. But in actual fact, in our country, it was only marginally easier the second time round. I have to say that um, that we still had to, um, to to bang on people's doors. It, it was a challenge. It was a challenge to raise the capital the second time round, despite the fact that we had a, a, a proven um, a proven history in managing rapid growth, that we had managed to successfully build a global brand, and that we had um, sold to Bacardi um, in 2006. How about on the business development and the sales? Are you finding it easier now that you've built a network before? Oh, there's, there's absolutely no question. Um, you, you've learned a hell of a lot of lessons the first time round. Um, we had really no idea uh, when, when we were heading out um, into the world um, what we were dealing with in terms of distribution and establishing relationships. It was We were running on gut. We were coming up with brave initiatives like the Vodka World Cup, which you may be familiar with. and. Um, and it, look, it was it was city of hand stuff. It was uh, train your people here, but we had a really clear vision that we articulated, um, and uh, we had a really clear sense of where the brand belonged. Um, we had a very clear sense of what the critical markets were. I think you know, especially when you're starting out, you can become very um, well. You, you just spread too thin when you're a tiny company, unless you identify exactly what markets. And, and the markets that we chose were the markets which we knew were style maker or style breaker markets. So, so we went for the, the, the high end style maker markets. We send our best people in there, and um, and they built relationships rapidly with a whole lot of support and a very clear vision from um, from HQ, which basically was a, a party zone in Penrose. <laughs> are, you sending, are you sending Kiwis around the world this time with the Koya? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've, we've run with the better the devil you know than the devil you don't um, mantra and we've brought um, back into the fold some of our fabulous team from, um, from 42 Below. And it, it feels great. Uh, you know, a lot of people, when 42 sold, we were all a little bit bereft and bewildered, to be honest, because we had created a culture within New Zealand and we'd built a brand from scratch and it felt good. Uh, to be a part of that little community, and it felt good to put pins in the map where you know of the countries that we've conquered. And um, and so when that when that went, when we sold to Bacardi, um, we were all a little bit lost and and, and saddened. Uh, and so we feel like we're regrouping, pulling the team back together, and we're going again. And um, yeah, and we, as you know, um, have 20 stores in Bloomingdale's now, which look is. Uh, a, a great coup and that's being led by Justin Babe who is based up in the United States and prior to that had been working on 42 in London. You know, give them some equity, give them the vision, uh, give them a brand that they believe in and, um, and then let them go and uh, it worked. Yeah. And how are you feeling at the moment? So you've got some positive and negative sentiments about where things are at, they're, re they're based on reality. How are you feeling? Um, well, what I've, what I've just uh, talked to this particular group about is some of our frustrations to do with um, sort of uh, with, with our culture, um, our lack of celebration of entrepreneurial spirit in this country. It, it is frustrating. Um, there seems to be uh, blockages at every turn, hence the title of the book, Every Bastard Says No. And uh, so what I'm, I guess, calling for is a bit of a cultural revolution um, in the way that we approach growth businesses um, in this country, in the way that we support entrepreneurial spirit. Going back to grassroots and looking at the way we're, we're educating kids in our schools and saying, listen guys, you know, winning is good. Uh, lofty goals and ambition is to be celebrated. Vision is important and, uh, and to truly celebrate that instead of the dumbing down of um, of aspiration, which seems to happen um, as a matter of course in our in our current regime. What about brand New Zealand and green technology and that kind of thing? What do these things mean to you, and what, what should we be doing about? Well, you know, New Zealand has a phenomenal opportunity, um, as you well know, in terms of its brand. Um, and you know, basically, brand New Zealand done well equals money for across all sectors and for all people. So um, the, the clear articulation of, of that brand and, um, 
in a, in, a, in a really strong vision and leadership around what Brand New Zealand is and what it means um, will, will have a hugely important impact on business. But at the moment, um, you know, I, I think you'd struggle to find someone in this crowd who would be absolutely clear on the brand values of New Zealand and how we fit in terms of, um, of, of green and green tech. Yeah. How do you think we change it? Is it going to be um, by changing government or is it more going to be driven from entrepreneurs and just doing our own thing and making something happen? Well, I, I'm backing the entrepreneurs, obviously. I, I'm backing the uh, extraordinary horsepower of, of um, Kiwis who are prepared to get in behind this, who believe so much in it that, and you know, I, I won't name names, but there are people who are joining forces to try and explain to government how important an opportunity this is for our country going forward. Before it's too late, you know. New Zealand, a day late and a dollar short. Let's not blow this one. It's too big. We're on the cusp of a big opportunity, you think, as a country? Absolutely. Huge opportunity. Huge opportunity. Obviously, there's a lot of, um, of distraction at the moment and, and, and you know, we have to support um, uh, you know, the, the imperatives um, down in the South Island right now. But in time, we will be able to refocus on our, on our national brand and to drive that forward. And the, and the critical thing here is with um, business success, with global business success, everybody benefits. Um, it's not about one guy getting rich and our petty little feelings about that. It's about all of us living better because some people have the vision and the courage and the perseverance to achieve uh, their goals and the rest of us can support and encourage them unconditionally. How are you personally spending your time at the moment? Are you splitting it between multiple things? You're obviously out there inspiring people from the book and now speaking. Yeah. What, how does your time? Look, I'm on book two. I'm working with, uh, with Akoya a little bit. Um, we can do quite a bit of travel with Akoya this year. And, um, and just looking at, at, at book two and, uh, and also um, raising two beautiful sons who I, I hope will become a rock star and a professional athlete. <laughs> yeah, no business for them. It's oh, yeah. I just want them to have fun. Maybe a fisherman. That'd be good. So you don't think growing up with an IPO at 10 and 12 is going to lead them to think? Yeah, well, they were both on the NZX floor with us um, for the listing of, of the companies. I mean, Malcolm Gladwell was alluded to, I think, uh, or was, was specifically referenced in terms of his book Outliers today. And I think um, the guy from Juicy, um, Tim, fabulous Tim. So there he was growing up with Maui camper vans. And I think Outliers, you know, I mean, the odds are that our boys will head into the business and if I can do something to smooth their path and make it uh, an exciting and rewarding journey with a little less bastard saying no, brilliant. What about the ice house? What is this, where does it fit into New Zealand and how do you think it helps? Oh, look, this is, this is hope right here for everything that I'm trying to, 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 to say. I look around here and I think, gosh, these amazing people have made the effort to gather today to absorb this information and to celebrate 10 years of the Ice House. Superb. This is what we need more of. The networking, the courage to say, this is who I am. And, you know, let's get in touch. And then to follow that up and to continue uh, at building those relationships. It's a superb, um, superb organisation. And I understand that it doesn't just support startups, it also supports uh, businesses who actually have already had a huge measure of success. So, you know, I think that, um, that they have a, a, an amazing knowledge base and, um, and that it is a, just a, a, an astonishing resource for, 